Hello, welcome to another Learning with Richard project. This is an awesome vice. It's an amazing design, simple to build, it's precision, it's been around for decades, and it's presently being machined by Carbide 3D for the Nomad desktop CNC machine. But in its present condition, it cannot apply enough jaw pressure to safely hold a piece of metal to handle the forces that a shape OCO3 produces. No matter how tight you tighten the two little screws, the nylon pads slip. At some point you can apply enough pressure that you actually pierce through the nylon pads and still not produce enough pressure. But there's a very simple fix or upgrade that can turn this vise into the super vise that you need for a Shape OCO 3. Here you can see the nylon skid plate or brake that is used to retain the jaw on the body. I was never able to get 400 pounds of force and you can see how deep the divots were. For this upgrade you're going to need a couple of the following items and they are listed in the video description. Some dowel pins, some set screws, and a long 6 millimeter by 70 grade 12.9 cap screw that's available from any good hardware store or of course as always McMaster car. These should cost you less than six dollars. What we're going to do here is do a slip fit dowel in each one of the two movable jaws in several positions. Now as I may have stated this is a simple upgrade to this great vice. You do not need a CNC machine, no programs. This is going to be done manually, just using a drill press and a couple of hand tools. Now, a good strong foundation is what holds up a good building. Likewise, a detailed and accurate layout is what's needed here to make this simple upgrade work correctly. Take your time, understand the drawing requirements, and lay out the vise for the necessary upcoming holes. Patience equals precision. Once your layout and center punching is complete, mark up the drills with some tape for the depth guide, then head over to the drill press. Carefully take your time and align the first hole to your spindle. Step one, three thirty seconds drill through the jaw and the vice body. It's very simple. Use WD-40. It's a lot cheaper than a broken drill and a vise. Step two is to open up that 3 32nd drill hole to 1 8 or 1 25. And this is for a depth of 1.1 inches, plus or minus a 32nd of an inch. Not real critical, but you don't want to go through the vise. This is to retain the dowel pin. Once this is complete, change the drill bit over to number 28 and then very steadily and slowly feed that number 28 drill from the start to its depth of again 1.1 inches using a smooth and even stroke. This is basically your reamer here. We're reaming with a drill. 
and it works wonderful. When the first hole is complete, realign the vise so that the next hole is in line with the spindle and repeat the three steps that you just did. 3 30 seconds, 1 8th, and then lastly, ream with the number 28. Once you've drilled the four holes in the two jaws, take it over to the vise and deburr your work. The countersinks in the tops of the jaws will be slightly larger because you'll be tapping those in a few minutes. Make sure everything is clean. Take your dowel pins, try them out, check out this slip fit. The purpose of the 330 seconds hole is to be able to push the dowel pins out when you're ready to reposition the jaw or to work on the vise. Now you're going to remove the movable jaw. That's the one with the six millimeter thread. Some chips might have gotten underneath it, so you might need to tap it out. Deburr all the holes, clean it up, and reinsert it back into the body, and move it up to the next line from your layout. This will be the next set of holes that you will drill through the body using the jaw as a drill guide. This is what makes this so precise. You're not drilling freely, you're using the jaw as a drill guide. You also may be thinking, why couldn't he have just used a 8 inch long screw? Well, nobody makes one that is 12.9 hard and a piece of threaded rod would be too soft and flexible for this upgrade. In case you're wondering, I'm putting four sets of holes in the base. It's so that we can use the vise for its entire length. The eight inch vise can hold material from near zero all the way to five and a half inches. And I mean that we can hold metal that entire distance using a combination of screw length and vice position. This upgrade design also allows us to remove the four dowel pins and move the left and the right jaw to wherever we want to the way the vise was originally designed for the Nomad. It's a very nice upgrade. Once you have correctly aligned the jaw for the next position, use the number 28 drill to align your spindle to the hole that's already in the jaw. Once you're comfortable, with this position, lightly dimple the top of the vise with the number 28 drill so that you give the 330 seconds drill a place to start. Fairly simple. Then repeat the steps one through three. 330 seconds through, 1 eighth by 1.1 deep, and then lastly, number 28. Again, 1.1 deep. When this is done, remove the jaw, deburr, bring it to the next set of lines, and repeat until all eight holes are drilled in the body. Take your time, use lots of WD-40, peck often so that your chips come out of the hole and you don't break a drill.
After the drilling is complete, the next on the list of things to do is to tap the four holes in the tops of the jaws. This is to retain the dowel pins into their pocket. Take your time when tapping. You need six full threads for a 3 16 long set screw. Creep up on this. Do four turns, put the set screw in, see how much it stands out proud, go back in there, do another turn, turn and a half, and whittle this down until the top of the set screw is just slightly below the top of the, the jaw. This makes it look very professional and does the job well as retaining the set screw but also clearing the top of the jaw for work that you might use on top of the jaw. So this surface needs to be um, normal, meaning no set screws should be standing proud of this surface. Because we have used the vice jaws as a drill jig, the precision on each side is very precise, but the jaws are not necessarily reversible. So using a center punch, lightly apply a tiny center punch mark on the jaws as well as the body on one side so that when you disassemble the vice for cleaning or for whatever, you can put it back together with the jaws facing the body in the original design when you drilled the holes. If you're really lucky and we're really precise, the jaws will be reversible and the dowels will fit on either side. Not critical. This essentially completes the upgrade so that you can use this on the Shape Oco 3, easily being able to apply 1,500 pounds of force to this vise. While the vise is complete, I have a recommended upgrade. Because we're using a 70 millimeter long hardened screw against a hardened ball bearing, it could slip off that center, theoretically. If we just apply a slight concave surface using a ball end mill or a standard quarter inch drill, we guarantee that that bolt will stay secure no matter how many foot pounds of force we apply. It's just a good thing to do, I think. Now, if you're using the MDF table, this vise can be bolted down anywhere to your wood surface. But if you have the metal table, I recommend this one simple additional upgrade is to install another mounting hole. Presently, it's just made for the Nomad table. You need to add one additional hole 100 millimeters from one of the existing mounting holes. 
which one you decide to move doesn't really matter doesn't need to be done on a CNC it can be done on a drill press just lay the work out the hole should be a little bit oversized to allow you to align the vise to the table in case your table is not perfectly square to your rails drilling a little oversized might be a good thing this one here is dead nuts straight I'm happy <laughs>